necessity, they say, is the mother of all inventions. So, this is my little invention. It's nothing more than two dimmers with on and off light switches controlling two outlets to control two par light stands so that when I shoot video you don't have to put up with a, with a shadowed out face so that I can go ahead and increase or decrease as needed for the particular setup and given the amount of light coming in the old kitchen window. Very simple device, very very simple just something we need to build. Now the basic plan is to take a power cord in. This is an old one that I use the two ends for other projects, so I just put a replacement end in, strip one end off, and I bought a cord strain relief. Now these things come in different sizes. This particular one is made of course for the size of cable. And since they come in different size cable, if you don't want to take the uh, roll in, you can always clip a piece off and take that with you and then that way you're able to get the proper size. This size is 187 to 312 and that way it's guaranteed to fit uh, the size of cable that I have and it just slides over there's a little rubber grommet come back here and then it squeezes down like a little like a little uh, collet on there and drill a hole in my little plastic box I've already cut out a slot for the receptacle put a cover on it what we're going to do then is we're going to run one receptacle off of one dimmer, run the other receptacle off the other dimmer, and that way I can, can control the two light stands off of the one box. Now the cover, I made this up. I'll give you a little hint. Th these type of covers that I use, they're not the hard plastic that splits and breaks on you, so you can drill into them fairly easily. They are ones that say they are, quote, indestructible. They're like nylon. So a little tip is to take and run some double-sided sticky tape along this. And when you put it on your blank cover, you get it where you want, you position it where you want, stick it down good. And then that way, when you make your measurements for your pieces and you scribe into your cover like this, you can have it in place, make your little baby holes to do your alignment for your pieces. When you measure now these are just little pulls, cabinet pulls. I do have to change out the screws to make them work with the thin plastic versus, you know, a, a wooden cabinet. So you have to make some changes. And then you can come in here and I used a um, Dremel tool to cut this out. Now, I'm not sure how I feel about this. One of the sides, my little tool got away from me and I've got little nicks on the side and I don't know if I'm all that happy with that but the con general concept is is that the dimmers will fit in here like this one dimmer will run one receptacle and so therefore one dimmer one light pole I use these particular ones because I can get them set so that I don't cause a washout uh, and then I can turn them off and on in between takes to kind of let them cool down or whatever, save a little extra to whatever I might need. The dimmers do have these ears down the side and they work as heat sinks. And one issue that you do have is that when you put the two together, and I'll do it like this so you can see, you can't put two gangs together like this. They don't fit. And so you'll end up having to break off a pair on the side. And that's going to cause this dimmer to be derated. It's not going to be able to handle the wattage that it's supposed to be able to handle when you end up taking off the aluminum, these two, two of the little ears, and I'll take off on this one, these two ears, and it will only derate the one dimmer because then the next one will fit right up next to it, and his three ears will give it more heat sinking. He'll have three ears on that side, and so I'll only derate 
the one dimmer a little bit. And this takes us down to 100 watts of CFL or uh, appropriate percentage in incandescent. So they'll sit like this. We'll have the, we have the protectors on the edge. And I think that, um, well, for what it's worth, I think I'll go ahead and, and trim out this. I can either have it like this, a little lower protection, or to put them on top, I'm going to have to go out and do a little dremeling and widen this because the body is wider than the face. And so I think I need to go out to the shop and do that. I'll be back in a little bit. Well, let's put this together. Went ahead and cut this out to allow front mounting the dimmers. These tabs are needed for heat, but you can't put two of them together in a double gang configuration without cutting them off or bending them down. I bent them down. This is uh, grounded, so they're electrically the same. So I put them in there. This should allow me to put my little top on like that. And I should have my little cover screws, which should go in here. And I don't think I'll put all, all four of them on camera, but you'll get the idea. They'll go like this. And the protectors, which are just cabinet handles. My cats decide not to play. They go in like that. And like this. And I won't screw them all together for saving of time. But I'll get on the back side. Come on. Flip it over. Put one of those in. I can get it started. There we go. The other one should line up. Through the advent of advanced mathematics. Actually, I did all this using that double-sided sticky tape I told you about and a set of calipers and a drill. Now, we have the cover made. We have our protectors in. Everything is fastened down. We have our two dimmers in place. On off with the presets. And they'll go in like this. We're just about ready to put the cable in. It goes with the little, the little grommet washer and the little ferrule. It goes through. Have to drill a hole down the close to the bottom using a hole saw and then it just gives a good compression fit and that's how our power is going to come in. We'll gather all of our grounds. It's a plastic box so there's no need to, to uh, really try to do anything with that. It's not metal so we don't ground the outside. Now on the receptacle you have a long side which is neutral and a short side which is hot and a little round side which is ground. If you look carefully you'll probably have on your device some kind of white screws. It's not coincidence they make that for the white wire. The brass looking screws are for the black looking wire. Green is for ground. But 
All this can be bonded together. The neutrals can be bonded together. We're going to take power in to our dimmer device. Out of our dimmer device will come to our receptacle. But we want these to be independent circuits, and they're not going to be independent circuits. Let me take this up. You see this little bar right here? This is a bar we need to break off. If I get my little screwdriver in there, we're going to lift it up. And we have to break this thing off and cut this. Work it, work it back and forth until we break this. Because this is what isolates these two circuits. We can't have this little bar in there. Because if we do, we end up having a bridge in the circuit. And we can't have that because then both dimmers will blow each other up because they need to be isolated. And we need to have two separate circuits. Now, let me get a little closer. See how they're broken off? Now we have two separate circuits. And you see this a lot in a house, like where you might have a permanently hot circuit here. And then you might wire another one to a switch. Say this may be your black and white pair, and this may be your red and white pair, and this red and white pair goes to a switch for, say, a lamp. So that the upper one is for a lamp, so that you plug in floor lamps or whatever you might have, so you flip a switch and your lamps come on, and the bottom ones are hot all the time. That's an option that you might have, you know, your home builder give you. So we're going to be able to put this back, back in our hole, and this will go back in our side. We're going to wire it up in a minute. But we'll use the appropriate connections here. Back side, because this dimmer is suitable for a three-way connection, we're going to have our green for ground, that we will collect all of our grounds together. And the red and white stripe, that's as if we had a three-way switch you know, an extra switch in the hall somewhere, which we don't. We'll leave those, what they often call them, deadheaded. And using the wiring diagram, I believe that we take red down to our device and black, which I will confirm looking at the wiring diagram, goes to our black here. So we should take a wire net these together. These will go to our receptacle. This greens gather the greens and the white goes to the receptacle. And that's all there is really going to be to the wiring of this device. Now, we're just about ready to wire it. What we did where you were going, we pulled the receptacle out. And we went ahead and took our wires and we, we did what we call tinning them. We, we soldered the ends of stranded wires, so we just wicked a little solder in there. There's different ways you can connect. These things are, these happen to be fork connector. These have a little retention in it. They're spring type. These are non-retaining. They're just straight. They're color-coded according to gauge of wire. You can use those. You crimp them on. Uh, I'm just going to use wire nets provided with the kit and put them in. Grounds often have a special connector. This is for doing receptacles. And what you would do is you take your, your TLs, or your clients, whatever you want to call these things these days. And uh, what we do is we gather our, our grounds together and put them up here, you know, bundle them. And then we take our clients or TL to line them apart. First, get a good mechanical connection, and that's where the uh, the uh, tinning helps, makes them feel like they're uh, solid wired. And now we can put our, whoops, I was going to use that fancy green one. And if we were doing copper wires on a receptacle in a house, we would take one long strand here. And we would have it protruding out through here. And this is what we'd use to make up to the actual device. Nice and tight. Now, our power feeds we're going to take together. I have two black wires. These are actually going to connect to my dimmers. 
And these we do exactly the same way. Make a good solid mechanical connection first. Trim. Am I staying on camera? Yeah, check the camera. Let me move it back in the field a little bit. Connect those. Take my neutral to neutral. Take those. Now, I want it laid out a specific way. Switches at the bottom. So I want this dimmer controlling this receptacle so that it will control a, that particular light stand when I plug it in. Remaining wire. Pull back on my wires to check the connections. I know they're good because I made them, but I might have made a mistake. And I'm going to turn my box over because I heard a little bit of trimmings fall in. And now I'm good to go. Got to take my little screws out. Put your screws in. And what we have is a very simple light stand controller for doing video work. What we do, plug one light stand in here, the other light stand in here, and I can go ahead and adjust the intensities with the PARs this way, off and on, in between shots. Very simple. Very inexpensive, and this is knockabout. Does a good job. What do you think?